In this video, I'll share with you some helpful and effective strategies that you can use to deal with a difficult principal or executive or supervisor at your school. Whether the person you work for is a micromanager, has anger management problems, shows favoritism towards one person, is a flat out workplace bully, or just isn't very competent, you still have to make the best of the situation, show up to school every day and get your work done. And your boss may be all of the above, and it can be untenable. But before you devise your exit strategy, think about what skills you may learn from this situation and what may, might you take away from the experience. Think of your boss as a difficult parent or student and manage them the way you would a tricky kid. And while you may feel like you shouldn't have to do that, if it makes your life better, what is there to lose? And it might actually improve the situation. New research has found that being overworked is not the reason people leave their jobs. A Danish study of four and a half thousand public service workers has proved the old adage that people don't leave jobs, they leave managers. And according to the psychologist involved in the study, what he said was, we may have the tendency to associate depression and stress with work pressure and workload. However, the study shows that workload actually has no effect on workplace depression. My name's Mari Amaro and I'm the principal presenter at The Highly Effective Teacher. I'm a teacher and I've been working with students and supporting teachers for over 30 years. I'm passionate about teacher wellbeing and I combine research and experience to provide strategies that improve teacher wellbeing, especially practices that take no extra time, that can actually give you back time by working more effectively. I love coaching teachers so that they thrive in the teaching profession, not just survive. Improved teacher wellbeing means improved student wellbeing, and that contributes to better academic and social outcomes for all our students. If you'd like to learn more about teacher wellbeing, please subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so that you receive notifications of all our videos. When you subscribe, that helps to support our channel and means that we can keep making these videos and get the information and support out to more teachers. Have you ever had a principal or an executive teacher in charge that did some of these things? Micromanaged, insisted on intending, attending every meeting with you, and not letting you meet with people higher up or taking carriage of any projects. Holding secret meetings with different members of the team, which is divisive, and then not inviting some other people to the meetings. Wasting time in meetings with trivial stuff and never getting to the important or the good stuff. Derailing meetings so that they're unproductive. Never answering your questions. Never clarifying or being clear with communication not communicating at all, catastrophizing everything and giving you the bad news rather than any good news, telling the team that other people are disappointed in them or upset or consider that the team does nothing, that other people think that the team's going to fail, that your school is doing really badly, questioning everything that you do in your team, even though they may not understand or know what you do. So do you just leave? Do you give up the dream job? Because it's certainly not a dream job when you have a nightmare of a boss. And a difficult boss can leave you feeling undervalued, misunderstood, angry, frustrated, and the list goes on. So I'm going to give you a list of suggestions of strategies that will be helpful and maybe help you to consider thinking about things in a different way. Thinking about things in a solutions focused perspective. Number one, are they really a bad boss? Ask yourself, is there a reason outside the boss's control why they act the way they do? Maybe there's something else going on. Number two, this may really help. What motivates your principal or your executive? If you can put yourself in their shoes, you may be able to make your own life better by managing up and avoid those lose-lose situations that just leaving, leave you feeling angry and frustrated. 
So ask yourself, what does your boss care about? What keeps him up at night? What would he love more of and what would he love less of on a daily basis? What frightens him? That's an interesting question. How much importance does he place on impressing others? And how does he measure success and what does he think about failure? Answering those questions might give you some clues around the types of things that you might want to change about your own practice. Number three, reframe. Reframing what happens can really help it with your well-being. It can help about how you feel about yourself and the kind of self-talk that you use. So asking yourself, what else could this mean? If your principal seems really demanding and asks for a meeting when it's meant to be a meeting-free week, are you able to give them the benefit of the doubt, knowing that they wouldn't call the meeting if it wasn't really important? And this helps you, not them. Number four, focus on their strengths. One way is to help your boss focus on his natural strengths. So if you know that he's really good at certain things, focus on that. And then you can work proactively around their weaknesses because if, for example, you know that your boss is disorganised, then you can help him to be on top of things rather than whining about his lack of organisational skills. If you know that your boss is often late to meetings, offer to kickstart the meeting. And if he tends to change his mind frequently or is outright forgetful, be sure to document the interaction so that you can refer back to them if he ever contradicts himself. If you know that your boss is slow to respond, continue to work on a project while you wait to hear back from him. Make yourself indispensable and someone your boss can rely on because we all have weaknesses and working to our strengths is a better way to go. Number five, don't let it affect your work. Continue to do your best and be your best. As Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. Take the high road instead of sinking into whining and being a slacker. If your boss yells, don't yell back. If they're late, you be on time. If they're disorganised, you be organised and reliable. You don't have to be tainted by their poor performance. Number six, focus on what you'd love about your work. Concentrate on the parts of the job that you do love and give it your all. Spend as much time as you can doing the things you love. Spend time with your students. Build that gratitude garden in the playground. Dance with your kids. Laugh with them. Work with colleagues that you enjoy being with. At least in the classroom, you can get away from the adults and spend time with the people who make the job worthwhile. Number seven, be a leader. If you're experienced enough in your field, you can go ahead with the work and lead in the areas where you are experienced. Take charge, show initiative, and show that you can get the work done and that you don't need micromanaging to complete your work. Number eight, let it go. This is one of the most difficult things to do, especially when you see incompetence and especially if the decisions that your boss makes impacts you and you feel is going to be detrimental to the work that you do. But being able to let go of the need to control this person is really good for your well-being. Be like Elsa and let it go. Number nine, listen. Sometimes when your boss, what your boss, boss wants is to be heard and that may be why they talk all the time. Repeat back to them what they said. Paraphrase and clarify. It may be tricky because it may be the last thing you want to do is listen to them because it seems like that's all you ever do. Try it and you may be pleasantly surprised. Number 10, learn what not to do as a leader. Practice self-leadership. And it may be difficult and challenging, but when we learn the most, that is the most challenging time. After all, it's the tricky kids in our class that really help us to learn our craft as teachers and help us to become more resilient and flexible. And they're the qualities you need when you've got a difficult boss. Number 11, be proactive if you do leave. Do your homework. Because if you decide to leave because of your boss, be it your direct supervisor or your principal, make sure you investigate in advance so that you don't go from one bad boss 
to another. Talk to the people in the team that you're looking at and see how they feel about what their boss is like. Number 12, keep some things to yourself. One strategy that I've found most useful is to do my work, keep my head down, express myself in respectful and helpful ways, especially when I've found that being passive aggressive doesn't work for me because I end up feeling negative and it affects me in an ongoing way. When I'm open, don't take things to heart, don't take on other people's issues, especially my bosses, and focus on what I enjoy. It works out better for me. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and happy teaching.